Okay, so if you follow my content regularly, you'll know that I created a game concept recently called Hunted. The concept is like 60 to 90 seconds long. I've actually forgotten how long it is. But anyway, you should definitely check it out. It's linked up here. In this video, I'm gonna be going through exactly how I made it, how I started in Adobe XD, did a bit of Photoshop, took it into Premiere Pro to complete the entire thing. Hey guys, you're watching Dansky, the place to be to develop your creative skills. And in this video, I'm gonna be doing a walkthrough for my hunted game design concept from start to finish. So from XD to Photoshop to Premiere Pro, the entire thing. If you'd like to download the XD file and kind of unpick it, dissect it, what I'll do is I'll link that in the video description. I'll take out the Adobe stock assets because of course I can't distribute them for legal reasons, but you can have a look. Hopefully it's helpful. Anyway, we're gonna to jump to the screen now and I'm gonna show you exactly how I made this game concept design. Okay, so we're on the computer. You can see I've got my folders up here. We're gonna go up to concept. We'll start with this. Next, after that, we're gonna go through and I'll show you how I did the Premiere Pro mock-up. And then this prep folder, well, that's just a bit of Photoshop in between. So first of all, I've got my XD file here. I can toggle this down. And I've got a bunch of different images. These character illustrations are awesome. I didn't create them, they're from Adobe Stock. The guy's name who actually did these is Paul. That's his profile name, just, just Paul. And they, they just look awesome. There are actually loads. There's way more than the six you can see here. So if I just whip open XD now, this is what it looks like from a top-down view. So quite a lot of artboards. And if I zoom in, you can see we have our start screen. We just have press start over here. We still have it over here on this artboard as well with the opacity just turned down. So this is all using auto animate between all of these artboards. It links them together. XD works out the transition, whether it's a change in size, position, rotation, opacity, and it animates that change between those artboards automatically. It's just an amazing feature. Okay, so we have, I think Montserrat is the font for pretty much everything. And then we have another danger for the hunted logo. And you'll see that text appear for the character names a little bit further on over there. So the first thing I did really was define the entire UI. So I designed this screen here. Once I designed the UI and I'd figured everything out, I just had to then duplicate that artboard and do another version with the highlighted menu option moving down. So I'm using a PS4 controller for this to animate it and I'll show you that in a moment as well. So you can see here the X or the cross just moves down. So you kind of need a new artboard for every single state that you would like to happen. Now, you might look at this and go, well, that's a ridiculous number of artboards. If I want to make a change to the background or a piece of text or whatever, it's gonna take me a long time to do. Well, not necessarily. If you're smart about this, and hopefully you are, you're gonna use components. So here you can see I have a master component indicated by the little green diamond in the corner. Now, if I duplicate this, and I need to make a change across my entire document to every instance of this component, watch. I just have to edit the master component, everything else gets updated. So that's a really, really smart way of working is to set up all your master components for things that are gonna repeat across your entire document. And then what you can do is if you need to make a change, update that one version, everything gets updated. So if we just go along here, same again here, it's pretty much the same as the first menu. So you're gonna go through, you've got the options menu here, and you've got the different options. And we have this little kind of right angle reticle here. This is so easy to create, pen tool, hold shift. There you go, and you can adjust the properties for this over on the right hand side, so I can make it a bit thicker make it white, and you could even make that a component as well. To make new components, by the way, just go over here to your asset panel, and you can see component, just click the plus symbol, and it becomes a new component. So we could type corner in there, and then I could do that for every single time I use that in my document. If I want to change the corner, I just update that one component. Everything changes, it's magnificent. Okay, so these are quite uninteresting. Next, we have the options screen. So again, a lot of elements copy and pasted here. And then we had just had different configurations. So we've got the selected object up here. It then moves down one with the red arrows as well. And it keeps moving down to the quality preset. 
And then what I'm gonna do is cycle through the presets. So we're gonna go low, then you can see there's a medium one, another medium one, <laughs> another medium one. So I did actually make a few different presets to enable me to turn things on and off, like uh, V-Sync, I think it was. So there's lots of different artboards here, multiple artboards for the same thing. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty complicated, but once you've created them all, like I say, if you have components set up, then you can just quickly and easily make changes across your entire document, like that. It's really good. So if I press Command or Control A, you can see all the links. I need to jump into prototype mode first. Look at those links, literally like a bazillion different links. That is a lot. So we're gonna jump over to the last screen now. We've got the character screen. Again, you could set a lot of this up as components. So we've got the name and kind of a little bit of sub copy to describe the character. And then we've got this bit up here. Now this is really easy to create. Just grab the polygon tool, click and hold shift to create. Now it creates as a triangle by default, but from the property inspector, you can just specify six as the number of sides. Hover over the corner, hold shift and rotate 30 degrees. So it's pointing up. And then we can just make the color of the border red, increase that weight, and just do the same with a circle. So we'll just give that a red border with a size there. Grab the line tool and just draw a line. You can make it whatever color you like. I'm just gonna go red again. And then just press Command or Control D on the keyboard. It duplicates the selected object. And from the property inspector, we can actually flip this horizontally. Just hold shift to select both these elements, bring them in and just make sure everything is in the center. And we can just make sure that is transparent. Group everything together and there we go. So you can have that there, then you can auto animate it to different ones on different artboards. So that's pretty much how I did that. It's really straightforward. And if you want to get images into that six sided shape, all you gotta do is just drag them from your desktop into the shape and there you go. It will populate that shape with the image and you can double click, go in, crop, all that good stuff. So once I'd done one, it was really just a case of moving these shapes around between the different artboards with auto animate. And uh, it just did the animation. It kind of, you know, it moved. There's some fog there as well. So this was really, really quite straightforward once I'd actually set up the design. Now, if we go into prototype mode, this was all done using a controller. Now, typically in XD, the way you would do a prototype like a website or an app is everything works on click and tap triggers. So you tap or click on a specific button, a bit of text or an image, and it does a thing. With the controller, however, because we're inputting buttons on a controller, I'm using a PS4 one here, that isn't assigned to a specific bit of text or a specific image. So if I just jump back into XD and select something, so like the back button, for example, if I click on this, you can see up here, I've selected keys and gamepad as the trigger. And then what you can do is actually click a key on the controller. So if I grab the controller, you can see that I can assign it to all the different triggers. So just by pressing the buttons, lots of different ways you can do it. So I assigned this to circle, which kind of made sense because circle, as you can see by the icon here, is the back button, but I could have assigned this action to any object or any layer and it would still perform that action. So that's the difference here is when you're using a controller, you can assign triggers with button presses to any object in XD, but it does make sense to do it to something like uh, if your back button is circle and your uh, save button is X or cross, just assign it so it makes sense because otherwise it can get really confusing, but you can assign triggers on controllers to absolutely anything. So essentially once I'd created the entire prototype, linked it together with auto animate, what I then did was you can go up here to play and I'll just resize this. So this was the concept. And then what I can do is up here, I can actually click on the record icon and you'll see it starts recording. Now I can't click through this because, uh, you know, this isn't a click based prototype. I need to use the, uh, the controller. So 
So what I can do now is actually press start and it goes in and I can then move around, go into options and you can see all those auto animate elements even auto animating the position of the arrow. So they move as I navigate down and how the characters slide in, how all the fog moves differently between different characters. So that is all done with auto animate. So I did a screen recording of this. You can see I've just done one there very terribly. Just click the record icon again and it lets you save this as a video file, which I've done and Essentially, once you've done that, once you've created your video file that is silent, but once you've created it, you can then go and pop it into Premiere Pro. And one thing I missed actually, just before we go too far, is if we jump into Photoshop, the images I downloaded, this was something I didn't actually use in the end, so we'll, uh, we'll ignore that one. But this is how the images looked when they were downloaded. I experimented with a few different ones. I just set this up as a PSD file with an artboard size that matches the artboard that I'm working on in XD. So I just had my character and then I just added a few effects. So if I turn this on, you can see I've just adjusted some colors, the levels a little bit uh, or curves, and I've added some light rays. So just to kind of, kind of put my own stamp on it, make it a little bit more dramatic and adjust the color. And then I just saved these out as JPEGs and then imported them into XD that way. Okay, there we go. So that's how I created the overall design in Adobe XD, added the graphics from Photoshop with the dramatic effects and light rays and everything. The last thing to do is to bring that video file that I exported from the prototype into Premiere Pro, add some music, sound effects, and then export it as a finished piece of work. So we'll jump back into it now. Okay, so we're finished with the concept folder. We can go down here. I've got my video folder and I've got a Premiere Pro file here that I just used and I created the Premiere Pro sequence size to be the same as what I've been working with in XD. I've got the game soundtrack here. Fantastic. And I've also got the recording that I did. So this is the silent recording of me actually clicking through the prototype with the controller. So those are there. I've also got some sound effects. These are from Envato Elements. We can just play a few here. Fantastic, lots of menu, clicking, beeping sounds. And I've also got some effects as well. So that, that's the one I use, I think, in the end, but we've also got some, some particles, a little bit of fire and a few others, just to kind of blend that into the still image that is in Adobe XD. So those are all the pieces. So let's jump into Premiere Pro. And you can see this is what the timeline looks like. I've added all of those different elements that I wanted to use into the project window here. You can go up to file and down to import here and just navigate to where they are on your computer. Now for the text, I actually removed this text from the design in XD and added this text in the font to Premiere Pro. So I could then apply this crazy glitch effect. And if you'd like to learn how I created the glitch effect, I actually did a tutorial recently on that. There's a link up there and um, yeah, it was, uh, it, was, it was pretty fun to see that come together. So the text glitches in and gets smaller. And then as I scrub through this, I'm just gonna turn that off. So we'll scrub through, you can see the press start flashes on and off. Now what I've done is I've added that video file. You can see there's the original with the video file. You can just click on this, set the blending mode to overlay from the effect controls window, and you can adjust the opacity. So the reason I brought that in at 60% was just to add some kind of movement, some visual interest to the background. And then we go through here. And then when I actually press start, you can see the hunted text disappears. Now this is really terrible, this B grade, C grade, D grade animation. Um, if you know how to use After Effects, definitely do it in that, but I'm not as proficient in After Effects, so this is how I did it. It's, it's quite hilariously terrible when you slow it down. So if I just scrub through this frame by frame, you can see that I just made Hunted bigger and blur out. And then this separate particle effect just came in. And with particles, all you need to do is change the blend mode from normal to something like 
screen. So if you have a black background, choosing lighten or screen as your blend mode will just blend that into the background, leave the particles over the top. So the particles kind of come in as the text fades out and gets bigger. It looks pretty terrible when you slow it down. When you play it back though, it looks pretty seamless. And if I turn the music back on as well, there's a little sound effect there to accompany it. I'll just uh, I'll mute the soundtrack, as fantastic as it is. So you can see it works really nicely and it happens so quick that no one will know about my terrible editing. Well, except you, you've just been watching it. Okay, so let's scroll along a little bit more. You can see we have some sound effects here. So these are set in position to match with the uh, timing that I actually move around on the video. So you can see a little sound as I move to the next menu item and a slightly different sound as I enter into the Hunter character selection screen. And then we go back to sound again, just every time. <laughs> so that continues to happen. Um, takes quite a while, but yeah, just define your kind of sounds for going into a menu, out of a menu, um, your selection sounds. So a few different bings, bops, that kind of thing is usually pretty good. Okay, so what have we done? We've added the text, had that come in really cool. We've added some background texture that just runs and loops through the entire thing. They've got that terrible but looks kind of cool effect there for the logo disappearing and then just added sound effects to every single action that I perform in the video recording. And if I just play a little bit now, we'll just turn the soundtrack back on. And to be honest, all this together with a fantastic soundtrack just really brings the entire thing to life. And there we go, that's how I made the hunted game concept. We started in XD, we did a little bit of Photoshop, and then we brought it into Premiere Pro to finish it off with some nice video effects, sound effects, and of course, a fantastic soundtrack. So there we go, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions or comments, please do drop those down below. But as always, like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care, and I'll see you next time.